the the younger dentists do not have the experience of having had dentistry done on themselves i think it's really really good for a dentist to go and be in the dental chair from time to time it's all the case of well, why can't we just do a digital yeah. workflow why yeah. can't we just make life easier for ourselves unfortunately yeah. there's, there's no shortcuts no and this is what you know your, your, your younger dentists need to understand virtual reality augmented reality and ai those are the three things that are going to be coming in the nhs does need to keep on going in some form and if it's to go forward in the form it is currently in and not just become an emergency service then we need dentists hi guys welcome back to dentistry unmasked in our previous episode uh we talked to paul tipton and in this episode, we will continue the conversation, part two of our conversation, where we're going to be discussing more things clinical, composite bonding, and digital dentistry. Hope you enjoy. We all know that composite won't last forever. Okay, we look at it as a sort of five to seven year material. Some people's mouths, it stains up very rapidly. Yeah. Other people's mouths, it seems to stay pretty well. Uh, a lot of that depends on the patient. Uh, and what the patient does with their mouth. Well, you know, you've just said that. I mean, I mean and I've heard this this figure many, many times, five to seven years, five to seven years. And, and as you said, I've seen it sometimes where we've placed like, you know, six composite veneers, you know, K9 to K9. And they come back and every six months they lose their loss and it's got to be repolished, repolished, repolished. And then there's a cost in, attached to that yes, for you there clinically. There there's a cost attached to the patient, you know. And then when, when it does eventually fail after five to seven years, some of these patients have spent thousands of pounds on this treatment mm. and it all has to be redone mm. again. And that's supposed to be a good cost, you know, because there's mm. not been a biological cost, yeah. Yeah. you know. So if we talk about costs... The initial cost is less in ceramic veneers, but I would argue probably over the long time, long term, it's probably a greater cost to the patient I in terms so. of time, yeah, maintenance. I so. you know. I think we forget that. I think we forget that a patient's time is valuable. Yeah. And you say to a patient, I can treat you either one visit or I can treat you in three visits. Which would you like? They're going to say one visit, please. Mm -hmm. um, or I can treat you now and it will should okay can't say will because accidents happen yeah it should last you 15 years mm -hmm. uh, or it'll last you five years and then you come back and have it repeated and come back and have it repeated which would you prefer every five years or 15 years and it's horses for courses and i say to all of my students i think it's it's something that all dentists um need to think of when they're doing their treatment planning when they have a patient in front of them um i saw a patient on where are we today, uh, on last Friday uh, afternoon, and asked the same question of them. Okay, which is the most important to you? Longevity of a restoration, aesthetics of a restoration, or minimum tooth preparation? Okay, so if you think about it and go through all the restorations you could have, you can't have all three. Mm. There's no restoration out there that gives you longest lasting best looking at the minimal biological cost, okay? Best you can choose is two, okay? So every patient, please choose two out of three. And the patient I saw on Friday, she uh, had lost, uh, it was a, just a standard uh, lower right six or seven. She had lost uh, the lingual cusp. So it was an MO, amalgam. Amalgam had come out, lost the lingual cusp, so lost the mesial lingual cusp. Distal lingua was still there. Options for treatment. Number one, let's put a filling in it. On the composite to it, okay. Um, least biological cost because I'm not going to prep the tooth. Yeah. Okay. Um, next one. Okay. Let's put a core in there and put um, an onlay in place. So most aesthetic, middle biological cost um, in terms of tooth preparation, longevity, 15 years, maybe something like that. Uh, or let's put a go crown on it or go three quarter crown. Okay. Least aesthetic. Mm, average in terms of biological cost, not high, not low, but longevity. I looked the patient in the eyes. The patient was 60, lasts you the rest of your life. Mm. What did the patient say? Give me the one that's going to last me the longest amount of time. And I'm interested, really interested to know from the younger dentists who are there might listen to this. How many patients do they offer gold crowns to, gold three-quarter crowns to? 
how many patients would say yes if they were delivered in that manner. Mm. But part and parcel of what makes um, me a better dentist is the fact that I've experienced all these different forms of dentistry. Okay, so I grew up in the uh, the drill and fill National Health Service. So I have got gold crowns, gold inlays. I've got PFMs, which are totally porcelain on the occlusal surface and buckle. I've got PFMs that have got metal on the occlusal surface. I've got root fillings. I've got a bridge. And I've got composites and amalgams. So I've got everything that you could possibly have. Okay. What gives me the most problems? Composite mm. restorations. Mm. Okay. I've got four or five composites. They're the ones that break down, chip, stain. I've got a, a class five on my canine here. Every four or five years, it stains around the margin because it's bonded onto dentine. Mm. It's got a little bit of recession. Every four or five years, there I am again. Gold inlay, had it done at university. You know how long that is. Um, Go Shell Crown had that done at the Eastman in 1988. So my bridges and my crowns are lasting me 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. My amalgams, probably 10, 15 years, and a bit's chipped off them. Mm. So I'm not saying amalgams are great, but they've been a good workhorse. But the ones that give me the most problems are composites. Yeah. So it's not designed really for wall to wall veneers in my opinion so 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 this is going to be a problem um attached to this though if i just go loosely on this is the whole almost religious evangelical yeah. no tooth prep <laughs> involved around this and you know we uh, seem to be the only people in the world Yes. Who 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 go for that, yeah. Yeah, so, so I mean, it's, it's you've weird. just taken the words out of my mouth because that was my next question. Is this a UK attitude or is it a worldwide attitude? So it's, it's a definitely a UK attitude. Yeah. Um, you know, you I, do a lot of teaching out in I, Dubai, I, don't I, you? I do a lot in, in yeah. the Middle East. And yeah. the Middle East, they just laugh yeah. at composite and composite bonding. Yeah. Okay, well, why would you have that done yeah. when it needs to be replaced after five to seven years? Mm -hmm. And the teeth are very big because again if you're doing composite bonding and it's addition it's as opposed additive, to subtraction yeah. the teeth are going to end up being a bit bulkier mm. so why would you have a soft paste bulky material on your front teeth um i've got no, no problems myself with having um teeth prepped mm -hmm. okay i've got lots of tooth preps in my mouth okay uh and they've lasted you know very very well so I've got no problem. And that's the experience. The The younger dentists do not have the experience of having had dentistry done on themselves. I think it's really, really good for a dentist to go and be in the dental chair from time to time. And if you've got a beautiful mouth with no fillings, nothing, you can't be in the dental chair experiencing what a patient experiences. Mm. The trepidation, the thought that is this going to hit dentine any minute and be painful? What's an injection going to feel like? So I think I'm very, very lucky that I went through the dentistry phase, National Health Service, um, drill and fill. So I've had a lot of dentistry done and I know what it feels like. Yeah. And I know that trepidation and I don't like it. And I'd rather have something done long term mm -hmm. that will last me than, than short term. Um, I think you know, we all treatment plan based on knowledge, based on what we can do well yes okay i right, don't do it? endo why well, i'm lousy at endo yeah. okay a large part of my master's degree was endo but i'm lousy at it so i don't do it mm. um so we do it our knowledge our um skill set but also experience mm -hmm. and for me crowns have lasted a long long time touch wood i've never had to have a tooth taken out that's been crowned mm -hmm. and you know they're with me and they will go to the grave with me Yes, and from time to time, every 15, 20 years, a bit of porcelain chips off and I'll have another crown put on. Um, but again, I think it's uh, it's overplayed. The, the loss of vitality aspect is overplayed mm. by uh, a lot of people. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of studies. The study, the classic study, which most dentists will go and quote, 20% of teeth go non-vital. Yeah. Heard a dentist saying that last week. Well, have you ever read that paper? That paper did not test the vitality of teeth in the first place. So there'll be a whole load of those teeth 
that have got big amalgams in them that were non-vital mm. and they were crowned and guess what they went non-vital that was not the crowning process that was the fact that they were already non-vital um so that needs to be taken out of it um a french study which i quote and and you've read the paper yeah. many years ago um 4.9 percent of vital teeth go non-vital over a 10-year period mm -hmm. okay and that was testing vitality and uh, you know make no bones about it the french study the french tend to like doing root canals uh, and the french study was it's not showing a positive response to vitality testing therefore conclusion it's non-vital it's going to be root filled first okay and there was no well you know maybe it is maybe it isn't hmm. whereas i think uh, we might go and say well let's give it a chance and let's talk to the patient and say i can either root fill it now or we can see how it goes and again the patient decides what they want to have done but you know you've got 20 percent is a very high figure hmm. and i don't believe that figure whatsoever i quote five percent to my patients Right. And now with the fact that we've got dentine sealing, the biggest threat to the pulp uh, is, is, of course, bacteria. Yeah. Okay. And if we can do our preparations correctly and seal the dentine and make sure that we clean the tooth with some chlorhexidine uh, sort of solution before and after we treat the tooth, then I think there's a, you know, the pulp's you know, a good, it's, it's able to go and, and, heal itself i was going to say that it, 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 it's a living tissue living tissue and, and um absolutely it's, it's able to take quite a lot it is there's, so, a, there's great studies done yeah. by uh, a guy called svek c-v-e-k i think he's just died fairly recently oh bless him uh, and he was the the, the top guy um around the world who did all the papers on you fracture a central incisor yeah. you go and immediately bond it back into position mm. okay you've gone into the pulp so what just bond it back into position as long as it's not been out of the mouth for longer than I think it was three days. Mm. And he showed that there's a 93% success rate over a 10 year period for maintaining vitality when a pulp was exposed due to trauma and it was not root filled, it was just adhesively sealed back in place. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think we've got reasonable literature uh, on, on pulps. If a pulp's dying, then there's nothing we can do about it. Mm -hmm. But we can stop an awful lot of pulps from dying by giving them the the opportunity to heal themselves. Yeah, definitely. Um, going back again to the composite thing and the whole religious aspect yeah, of yeah. it, attached to that is social media as well, and yeah. especially in this country. Uh, I just want to very, very quickly and just loosely talk about, so I mean, we were talking about off-air, and, 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 and you were asking me about, you know, what I'm doing and and and, yeah. and and what I'm posting and, and and I'm posting less and less I'm pretty much not posting at all these days I don't want the hassle because I'm not very thick-skinned and maybe I do need to develop a thicker skin if I'm gonna be doing stuff like this but uh, I've seen some 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 awful sometimes some nasty comments yeah. you know when you post some ceramic cases so some, some some awful comments some 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 comments along the lines of oh this is old school dentistry this 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 belongs in a history book and you know there's a respectful way of replying to to something with your opinion and there's quite a nasty way of replying yeah whichever way it doesn't it doesn't bother me whichever way they i'm, I'm thick-skinned yeah um so does it not bother say you? it just a bit. No, it bothers me for for 10 seconds yeah and then it's got to think you know idiot or why are they saying that you know you, you take everything personal mm. but within 10 20 seconds you know life's moved on and I, i've forgotten that comment yeah but have you seen, it's happening more and more, don't you think? It is. It, and, you know, everybody who comments like that on social media mm. is obviously the best dentist in the world. Mm. And they never make mistakes and they don't have difficult patients. So mm. we live in the real world. And I am all, again, I'll, I'll go back to it, asking the patient those three things. Okay. How long is it going to last? Okay. Do you want it to last as long as possible, be the most aesthetic or the least biological? Mm. Okay. And we have to understand that we may have a, a huge respect. Respect isn't the right word, but I'll just use it for now. Huge respect for the tooth and enamel. A lot of patients don't. Mm. Okay, we can replace teeth with implants. Okay, there's lots of parts of our body we can't replace with implants, etc. So from my point of view, I like to deal with the patients you know, eye to eye. Okay, make them understand. So I'll write a comprehensive treatment plan, which is non-dental. Mm. We talk caps, not crowns. Mm. 
okay pulps uh, uh, nerves dying not pulps coming non vital or that sort of stuff so they understand and they make a, a decision okay nobody at my age in life now is going to tell me I have to have such and such done no I'll make my own decision I will research and if that decision is the wrong one mm. then it is on my head mm. but more and more people are trying to be this namby pamby state okay and and again we hear about it don't we all, all the time and the latest one was we should be having um this obesity tax or well, not a tax yeah but Sugar should tax. we as a nation now be prescribing mm. anti eating pills slimming pills to you know 20% of our population and one group says yes we should because yeah. that's the nhs will save money on the nhs don't believe that for a minute because if any money saved on the nhs it goes on middle management mm. so we'll never get that nhs and the other half of this equation says why am i being told what i can eat i'm going to live till i'm 75 or 80 years of age and i want to live well i want to enjoy red wine i want to enjoy a curry i want to enjoy whatever it is a lovely piece of cake mm. why should why is somebody telling me i can't do that mm. so again i think it's you you you've got to look the patient in the eye and ask them what they want and if they want conservative i've got doing a patient at the moment where all full mouth wear case i'm sure you see them all the time two options we can either go and do it in full ceramic okay and it's going to last you the next 15 20 years or we can do it in composite and we can do difficult composite onlays you know injection molding okay and within 5 years bits will need replacing hmm. don't mind whichever way you want to do it and this patient's decided that i don't want my teeth touched i want them bleached and i want it then done in composite great fine we're going to do it it's going to be a tough job it's going to take a lot longer to do hmm. um but we'll do it and that's just injection molding with 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 composite yeah. you know every other tooth um injection molding yeah and we'll do it yeah. but that's not a problem but that's what the patient wants good we'll do it Guys, as you know, I am the lead tutor of the Hedro Academy Vertical Preparation course. Now, we have put together this beautiful vertical preparation kit, which has been beautifully made by Former Dental Supplies. Simon at Former has kindly agreed to give one lucky winner uh, of this podcast a kit completely, completely free of charge, uh, which retails normally at £220 plus VAT. So all you have to do to win one of these fantastic vertical preparation kits is just give us a like, uh, subscribe to the podcast and share it and leave a comment below and we will pick one lucky winner every podcast and uh, Burkitt will be finding itself uh, in your clinic. Okay, so yeah, great guys. The Horacle Burkitt by Hedro Academy and former dental supplies. Social media is, is driving a lot of the trends. Yep. Yeah. As absolutely in, in dentistry yeah. so may i ask uh we'll go slightly onto a different topic may i ask about digital dentistry yeah. because you know one of the most fundamental things that changed my practice was you know, was what i learned on your course and uh it was before the rise of digital dentistry was the quality of impression materials uh you know using PVS materials, yep. uh, using good quality labs, good quality stone, you know, uh, semi-precious and precious metal crowns. I'm doing a lot more zirconia now, but, you know, really under understanding the materials. And with the rise of digital dentistry, not only has it changed the way we have digital workflows in clinic, but it's also changed the laboratory side of things mm. as well. And more and more and more, we're seeing labs which are not using stone. More and more, we're just seeing labs which are just milling everything. Absolutely. And it used to be a case of they used to mill most things and then layer the porcelain. Now they're just milling these monolithic blocks of zirconia, and that's coming out en masse. Surely this is also a ticking time bomb, no? Um, I don't know if it's a ticking time bomb. Uh, we, we, we made a decision about 18 months ago mm. to fully embrace digital mm -hmm. okay up until then like a lot of people just on the outside watching 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 uh, as it goes on and waiting for the first time to, to jump in so now all, all our courses we have digital scanners on them mm. when we're doing the operative course etc we have digital workflows but again 
you also have to do analog from time to time. Mm -hmm. And I still do analog with a bit of digital. And although a lot of the guys that we're teaching are doing a lot of digital with a little bit of analog, but you've got to do both. I think we've got to get to a situation where we understand that the labs, as you quite rightly said, are driving this. Mm. Um, why are they driving it? Well, they're driving it for a very good reason. Um, number one, you look at the average age of a dental technician in the UK. Any idea? Average age of a dental technician in the UK yeah. now? Well, I think I would presume, right, I'm, I'm, I'm going out here, yeah. so, so I'm probably going to get this wrong. I would presume that there's a lot of dentists who have retired. Uh, sorry, technicians who have retired. So I'm yeah. presuming that a lot of the new technicians coming aboard are very, very young and they don't have opposite. that skill. Is the opposite. opposite. Average age of dental technician in this country at the moment is 53. Right, okay. We're running out of them. Right. Okay. So labs understand that. And again, we had to talk off air yeah. about staffing issues. Yeah. Okay. And the labs, they understand it. The, in another few years' time, there'll be nobody to be doing the lab work the mm -hmm. conventional way. Yeah. Okay. So now they're looking to create computer programmers, okay. software engineers that know a bit about dentistry rather than the classic technicians that have worked their way up from apprentice all the way through to, to lab owner. So we're running out of technicians. That's number one. Mm. So labs are now equipping themselves more and more to do digital, mm -hmm. where they can employ a younger workforce, a workforce that is more varied and more opportunities. So you know, we talk about you know, aesthetics, computer software that you can now show, train somebody to create a nice looking tooth. Okay, and we'll put that into a dim digital wax up. Um, Digital wax ups, you know, I prefer to see something in my hand than a digital one. All digital wax ups look the same to me because the teeth look exactly the same. Um, but driven by the labs, that's number one. Um, is there still a place for analog? Absolutely. 150%. Absolutely. Um, from what I read in my journals, I, pres I subscribe to about 15 journals per month. So I'm always going through the journals. Big part of my work is sifting through the journals, looking for you know, what is right and what's wrong. Um, and all the journals that I see that compare scientific articles, digital with analog, the best analog beats the best digital. Average digital beats average analog. So um, if it's super gingival, digital every single time. Mm. But now we're dealing with subgingival margins. I know you're you know, heavily into vertipreps. Yeah. Geez, you can't take a, no. a digital impression with a vertiprep. No chance. Uh, so you go subgingival, you're then working really hard to get a, a digital um, impression out of that digital mm -hmm. scan. Um, the other part which we've not solved yet is um, you can give the technician all your digital stuff, but he's now using a digital articulator which is just an average movement. Yeah. So it's just like putting that on a simple hinge articulator. Mm -hmm. um, so if you are going to do digital, you should still get a face bow done and you could still ask the technician to cast models. He still needs to put that onto an articulator if you want to uh, have a better um, end result that's quicker to fit, that's got a better occlusal scheme to it. Mm -hmm. So parts of the digital. Uh, module so is the is the, the missing part. Hmm. Um, so module allows um, you know the full digital integration. And we're using T scan. We've not got a module. Uh, unfortunately, module uh, the company we're finding a little bit difficult to, to work with. Um, but we use T scan now and, and we use T scan for all our, our uh, full mouth reconstructions, all our um, occlusal splints when we teach that um on our courses t-scan can we just clarify what t-scan is for people listening t-scan tech scan it's um it's a foil electronic foil mm -hmm. so it's like a u-shaped articulating paper right but electronic foil you pop it in the patient's mouth you tap up and down yeah okay and you can see where the high points are mm -hmm. so whereas articulating paper will tell you there's your contacts won't necessarily tell you if that's a high contact or not. Mm -hmm. T-Scan takes it to a, another degree and shows you you might have contacts all around the mouth, yeah. but it will tell you which is a high contact, which maybe has only just come into contact. So it's just taking it that step further. Mm -hmm. 
Um, you can do very nice things with lateral movements as well. Uh, and you know, if you want something like group function, you can see which teeth are coming in at which time as you go into right or left lateral movements. Um, very often when we're trying to mark up um, non-working side, balancing side contacts, difficult to see the first movement. However, on T-scan, very easy to see the first movement. Mm. So really nice piece of kit. Yeah, amazing. That we've been using that for the last six, nine months. So you're you teaching that on, on yeah, your courses? Yeah, teaching that on courses. I think I need well. to do the yeah. longer courses you again. You need to do a, yeah, a refresher <laughs> on that. Um, yeah. But So module, but the problem with module is it costs 30 grand. Yeah. So, you know, it's never going to get integrated into, you know, mainstream digital dentistry at the moment yeah. until something comes out, which is a reasonable price. Yeah. Um, there's another thing I was just looking at, uh, because as you know, I've placed a fair number of implants. And I think another thing in the field of implantology, which is a dying art, is a free hand placement with a full yep. understanding of the anatomy of the maxilla. People, I yeah. was with a dentist last week, fully guided. Yeah. And just, you know, the hole's there, therefore that's where I'm putting the implant. Yeah. Never questions. Yeah. And I think we're going to come into some serious problems with, again, losing the technique to be able to override your CT scan, yeah. override your surgical guide, and go freehand if needs be. No, oh, absolutely. That's a skill because, as you know, we run our own implant course. And, um, you know, that's one of the biggest things we've seen with digital is we can plan and plan and plan and plan. But unless you have the ability to mid-surgery, if things just don't feel like they're going right, mm. unless you have the ability to cut a flap and actually look at what you're doing, yeah. 99%, well, yeah. I wouldn't say 99% of the time, but a good number of times we've seen that actually, look, we've got threads outside that mm. buckle plate. Yeah. We're going to have to put yeah. a graft in there. So too, it's too quite reliant. scary. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, too yeah. reliant on it. Yeah, so, I mean, digital, again, I think the reason why I'm having these conversations is when I talk to, 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 to younger dentists, it's all a case of, well, why can't we just do a digital yeah. workflow? Why yeah. can't we just make life easier for ourselves? You Unfortunately, there's, there's no shortcut no, and this is what you know your your, your younger dentists need to understand. Mm. There's no shortcut to doing smile makeovers. There's no shortcut to doing implants. Okay, you've got to learn the basics, the theory, the basics. You've got to understand occlusion. You've got to know how to suture, cut a flap, mm. um, how to prepare teeth properly. Uh, you know, nowadays I even see th this guided veneer tooth preparation. Oh yeah, I've seen that. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, very interesting, yes. Yeah. 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 So um, can I just ask then, this is a UK thing then. I mean, not digital. I mean, digital I'm, I, I'm, 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 I'm kind of, I'm kind of encompassing everything now. So, kind of like the U, the way the UK has gone is, you know, we're heavily into bonding, composite, minimal yep. preparations, and obviously, then digital is in that as well. It's, it's, it, don't get me wrong. It's not. They're, they're two separate things, but the, 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 um, the current trend is minimally invasive. Yep. Bonding, pretty much. Let's go full digital workflow with as many things yep. as possible. Um, where do you see what? What's the next step? For the UK, at Next least. step is AI. Right. So uh, so we are already into some AI, um, and we've got you know, virtual reality, augmented reality, and AI. Those are the three things that are going to be coming in pretty soon. Um, AI is already there with radiographs. So we're using uh, an AI recognition uh, system for radiographs. Okay. Unbelievable. Uh, German study, so we're using a German system, um, just been bought out by Align Technology. Uh, and so I don't know if we are going to be using them going further forwards, but German system, um, calibration-wise, did some um, studies on dentists looking at interproximal caries mm. on radiographs. Um, consultants at the hospital looking at interproximal and then uh, AI. Um, students, dent sorry, no, dentists, 53% uh, success rate, and we'll tell you how, how we know that, uh, looking and gauging interproximal caries. Um, consultant staff at university, 68%. Mm. AI, 98%. Okay, uh, and they know that because on the ones that they went and did the um, treatments on, 
Sometimes there was carries there, sometimes there wasn't. Mm -hmm. So 98% success rate. It also tells you whether it's enamel carries or it's gone through to dentine. So it'll tell you when you have to actually go and restore the tooth. Yeah. Uh, and you know it, it's 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 there in um, looking at breast cancers and all that sort of stuff, reading um, other radiographs. So it's the natural thing that, that's coming in. Hmm. So that will be with us very soon. I mean, it's with us now. It's in our practice now, uh, in several practices. Uh, it's great at interproximal caries. It will tell you whether you've got a periapical abscess there with greater uh, accuracy. Um, doesn't read OPGs very well but great at PAs and um, bite wings. So that's coming through. And then, of course, we've got everything that will go with that. You know, you know nowadays that the, uh, what was the, uh, the latest one that now goes and can write books for you? What's that piece of software just come out that uh, one of the girls at, at my office, um, Beth, who works with me in marketing, mm. she's now writing a website and she's just asking this particular software to write the website. Right. And it will go into the internet. Sometimes you've got to just look at it because mm. sometimes it might throw up a few things which are um, interesting, shall we say, because it's interrogating the in internet. Mm -hmm. But it can write a thesis for you now. Okay, you just say, you know, write me a thesis on such and such. Mm. And it will come out and it will, with it, you know, like that, write you a thesis. Oh, okay. Um, so all this is is coming out. It's going to help us amazingly. Mm. Um, and then we've got augmented and virtual reality, which, from a training point of view, I think is going to be very, very big in the next few years. Mm. The ability to just put on my son's working with virtual reality uh, in sport, uh, and you can just put a headset on and haptic gloves or haptic handpiece, and now you're prepping a tooth, and now you've got the feel of you're actually cutting dentine or cutting enamel. So instead of using a phantom head, you've just got a pair of glasses and a little handpiece. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And is that a good thing? Is that a good thing? Because, oh. like, because I mean, loosely we talked yeah, about... We, we can, we can yeah. show my age and say, oh, no, I don't like this. Of course, uh -huh. it's a good thing. It's, it's, yeah. it's technology. It's advancing. Yeah. Um, and there'll be a few hiccups along the way, I'm sure. Yeah. But, but that's, that's the way it's, it's going to be going. Okay. But still, there needs to be somebody who operates it. Hmm. And that person who operates it needs to understand when it's not performing correctly yeah. to stop a big mistake. Yeah, yeah. Well, what sort of time scale are you thinking for these sorts of uh, technologies? Well, AI is with, with us. Virtual reality yeah. adds, is not very good at the moment, but it's in a few dental schools. Yeah, uh, I think it's over in Leeds already. Okay. Um, so it's worth checking out. It's not brilliant. It's yeah. only the first starting points of it. Um, certainly, it's in surgery at the moment. There's, uh, I went and visited a, um, a company in London about five years ago that were doing it for hip replacements. Yeah. Um, we're teaching surgeons, okay, injection. Okay, so you got your headsets on. You're now injecting. Now you know you're a bit further. Okay, if you hit something, that's bone. Come back a little bit. Um, doing uh, Using a, a scalpel, cutting through tissue. Again, you're doing it there, and you're just picking up the scalpel and just throwing it through midair, but it feels as though you're cutting tissue. Right. So this has been around in in the surgical uh, domain for for years, okay. uh, five years at least. And now it's just dentistry is now, you know, as always, we're the 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 poor relation, the catch up. Yeah. Um, so I'd have thought it'd be in a lot of dental schools, most dental schools, certainly within five years. Wow. It'll be there, and phantom heads will be will be gone. gone. Amazing. And the Gosh. cost of, you know, imagine the cost of a phantom head, cost of teeth, okay, cost of teeth and in, in, in the world economy. And uh, are they biodegradable, the teeth that we cut down, you know, on phantom heads? Mm. So this is all just virtual. Hi, guys. Are you thinking about getting into dental implantology? Well, if you didn't know, I'm one of the founding members of Unique Implant Training. Unique Implant Training is now in its fifth year and we are now fully EDUCOL accredited to diploma level, which is an 18-month diploma, the only 18-month implant diploma currently in the UK. So if you want to begin your implant journey, please don't hesitate to give us a call. Find us at www.uniqueimplanttraining.co.uk. We look forward to seeing you soon. Uh, Paul, I must congratulate you as well. 
actually while we're on this to, well it's a completely separate topic but congratulations are you were given a lifetime achievement oh god award yeah it made me feel very old yeah the private yeah. dentistry awards only, uh, they only give that to people retiring but i'm not retiring yeah but yeah. congratulations yes, thank you. Thank and, you. and well deserved thank you and uh, thank i was you. very very happy to see yeah. it and uh what, what's the future hold for you future what's for next? me is doing more of what i'm doing really yeah. um I'm excited about dentistry. I'm excited about the opportunities. Um, you say this, you know, I get asked, you know, to write a, or to be interviewed for, um, you know, a magazine, FMC. Mm. And you look back on some of them. I was looking back on one from 1998, I think, when I was interviewed mm. and saying, I'm really excited about the next decade and all the changes. And again, I'm, I'm just the same now. Yeah. I think there's huge opportunities. Whenever there's change and progress, there's opportunities. Yeah. And I've got two hats on. I've got a business hat on and I've got a clinical hat on. Uh, and I see opportunities business-wise, uh, areas where I can take my business. Um, and, you know, we've just started a corporate, as I just mentioned to mm. you, from a business point of view. Um, and we're looking to get 10 practices in the next three years, or squats uh, in and around the, the Northwest. Um, and that's, you know, we started doing that. Uh, so that's exciting. Um, using the latest technology f with tips and training and with haptics, virtual reality, we're going to embrace that. That's exciting. Uh, clinical work, you know, I love doing my clinical work. And whether it's analog or digital, what mixture, as I said before, I'm analog with a bit of digital. Mm. I'm sure that will just start to change over the next four or five years. Um, but I look at myself and say, you know, I won't look beyond 10 years, but hopefully in 10 years time, I'm still working and I still want to work. But mm -hmm. certainly I've got another decade or ahead of me of training dentists uh, to become better dentists, to understand dentistry, which you know, they don't. You know, I want them to be not tooth doctors. I want them to be uh, doctors of the masticatory system. Mm. So they really understand how all those parts work. Um, so yeah, the, 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 future is, is, I, I don't know. And that's the great thing about it is that I don't know what it's going to be. I've got a few ideas, mm. but you never know. It suddenly may take a turn here, a turn there. Just very, very quickly. I'd just like to ask you a little bit more personal, you know, some, some personal questions, if that's okay. So, you know, with you, um, I think it's fair to say workaholic. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Love my work. How has that impacted your personal life? Um, I've I've been very fortunate the fact that mm. I've always managed to get home at night. Mm -hmm. So I've been busy during the daytime. Yeah. Most people, you know, go to work. Okay. Those who do very well in life sometimes have to sacrifice and are away from their family for nights, weekends, weeks, etc. I'm thinking my brother in law worked for Anderson Consulting. Mm. Um and he used to go off to fly to Chicago at a moment's notice. Mm. He'd be in meetings till, till late at night. My work has tended to be nine to five. And so I work very hard nine to five. Um, I understand business well, so I'm a good delegator. So I create teams around me. Yeah. Uh, and this is, you know, talking to you earlier, this is, I think, the secret to success when we are working in our business as well as on our business. So I'll go back to Michael Gerber. Michael Gerber. Okay, so Michael Gerber. The E-Myth. Um, the yeah. E-Myth, okay, and a great book. Everybody should uh, should read The E-Myth. Mm. Uh, and I had the pleasure of um, being mentored by Michael, right. um, lecturing on the same platform as him, um, you know, going back 15 years ago now. Uh, and having read the book, I, I got it straight away that – if you want to be, and I don't like the word entrepreneur because it's got strange connotations. Mm. If you want to be a good business person yeah. as well as a good dentist or clinician, then you've got to understand that you've got to spend time on your business generally, not just in your business. Yeah. And as you said earlier today, we are widget makers. Mm. And you know, as dentists, we've got to bring ourselves back to the lowest common denominator. What do we do? Yes, we're dentists. We help, but yes. We produce widgets. That's widgets, an amalgam, a denture, a composite, a tooth extraction. And there's only so many widgets you can do in a day. And there's only so much you can charge the market can take for that widget. So if I wanted to become much more successful profitability-wise, I'll go and say my crowns are £50,000 each. 
Mm. And guess what? Suddenly, whoosh. Yeah. But is the market going to stand that? No. no chance. Yeah. So you can either be more, get more widgets done in the day, health service, treadmill, come on, more, 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 or higher prices. But you can never get past a certain limit. Only way you can get past a certain limit is now to create a team. Yeah. Okay. And create a team of people around you. I don't want to say underneath you, but I, I do mean underneath you, really. You're the team leader. Uh, and you have a, a team, and that team is a periodontist, implantologist, endodontist, um, nurse coordinator, receptionist, hygienist, therapist, etc., and creating that hierarchy in that team. Mm. So you're the main one, and this was brought home to me, <clears throat> and you don't mind me telling you a little story again, Please. It's slightly off-piste. It. Um, yeah. I just qualified gone back to manchester this is again 1984 83 84 um bad back so i had a back operation and once i'd finished at lancashire went to australia and i played a bit of cricket there i then went and played minor county cricket for cheshire for five years that's mm. just part-time uh, professional but at the age of 30 i had a back operation um and i had two discs removed and it meant that I've always had a bit of a weak back. And from time to time, I need physiotherapy. Wow. So there's a physiotherapist in the central Manchester called Freddie Griffiths. Uh, and he was the Manchester City physio. He played rugby for sale. He was the sale physio. And he was also the Lancashire physio. So I got to know him at Lancashire. And then I used to go and see him probably twice a week, keeping my back um, going. And Fred was the big name in physiotherapy in Manchester. He had um, a clinic in St. John Street, which is like the Harley Street of Manchester. And in his clinic, I, I studied it. He was very successful. A um, little bit of history. He had George Best as a tenant. So the, the basement of his practice in St. John Street, and these are all four, five-story Victorian premises. Mm. Okay, his basement was set out as a flat, and George Best you know, used to live there. Right. So Fred knew everybody in Manchester, great networker. And you'd go into Fred's practice. Okay, he had a dozen physiotherapists there, loads of rooms. Okay, you go and get one of the girls would take you into Fred into surgery number one, and Fred would come in. So there's a, a lady there, physiotherapist there already. Saying, okay, you know, lie down, let's you know, take your shirt off, you know, blah, blah, blah. Before she commenced, Fred would come in and Fred would say, Hi, Paul, how's things? Yeah, blah, blah, blah. I was with Clive, Clive Lloyd, the other day, and he was sends his regards, made you feel really, really important. And he'd say, What's the problem? And, you know, okay, a few little bits and pieces. Okay, um, Jane, the physiotherapist there, um, do some massage, do this, do that, do that. Paul will be back in a few minutes. All he do is walk 12 rooms. Yeah. Everybody thought that Fred was his, their physiotherapist. Yeah. Didn't know Jane. Jane came and went. Yeah. Okay. But everybody thought, Fred, he's my physio. Mm. And he treated 12 patients every half an hour. All he did was walk from room to room. Yeah. Got all his steps in. Okay. And that, you know, that really came home to me that you want to be seeing and meeting and greeting all your patients, but then saying, no, I'm not the best at composite bonding. Go and see such and such. Yeah. Okay. I'll come make sure that I see you afterwards. Make sure everything's okay. Got any problems? Come see me. Yeah. And that's, so it's the art of delegation and building teams, which I think is, is the important part. Absolutely. That's amazing. And uh, you've told me this before and I think that message has kind of been forgotten. So I'm yeah, really, listen, yeah, we, we we get bombarded, don't we? Absolutely. From time to time, we all need to be just reminded of things yeah. we've said or done or heard. And you go, oh, yeah, back on track. Yeah, yeah. Because we do like, we, as we talk about gold going from here to here. We yeah. just go like this, don't we? Yeah. Meander. See somebody just to get you back on track. Yeah, I've got to look at my business again. And that's the that's the, the mentorship part. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and that's, I think, is, is huge. So every person should have a coach or mentor. Mm. And the coaches have coaches ultimately it stops hmm. obviously but all the coaches should have mentors all the mentors should have mentors etc it obviously has to stop with one person but uh, everybody even the best need to come back on track hmm. and he said come on no that way 
Yeah, okay. No, that's cool. So, And I have a business coach. Yeah. You, you have your own yeah, business yeah, coach? Yeah, I have a business coach, yeah. Really? Yeah. Who's your coach? Yeah. A guy called Les Murray. Wow, okay. Where's, yeah. where's Les Murray? And he's, uh, he's somebody who's been in all sorts, not dentistry. Right. Just all sorts of businesses. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, I'm meeting him on Wednesday. We've got an afternoon together on Wednesday. Wow. Where we, we look at goal setting. You know, the basic stuff that yeah, we, yeah. we teach all the time. You know, goal setting, where we're going to be in three years, five years, et cetera. Reset, what do we need to do to get to there? Right, okay, let's reset, let's go. Okay, amazing. Um, the reason why I asked you about your personal life and, 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 and the work uh, aspect of it is because I was having this uh, podcast with Tony, Tony Kilcoyne, and you know Tony yeah. uh, from your undergrad Great days. Love. Yeah, Great love. lovely chap. And uh, we were talking about the generational differences and how like the baby boomer and the generation x is very work orientated but the yep. the guys now you know generation i think it's the zoomers now z or gen whatever. gen yeah. z uh doesn't see work as central to their life they see work very much as it fuels my lifestyle that's my nine to five uh but friday is for my self-development now and then the weekend is for me where do you see our profession going with with this if generation if you can be successful that way. And the first thing we all have to understand is success is different mm. for me, for you, for that person there. So you have to define success, first of all, mm. because you never know if you've got success unless you define it. And you can be searching all your life for success, and you may have achieved it 10 years ago if you actually define it. Mm. So success is a destination that you try to get to and hopefully at some stage get to. Mm. Okay, and then you redefine again. What do I do now? Um, so if somebody could be successful for what they want to do, doing four days a week plus one day, you know, working on themselves weekends off, fine, mm. not a problem. But what is their level of success? What's mm. their definition of success? And if they want to say their definition of success is, is right up there, yeah. they may find that, you know, they spend a lot of time and they're not really getting anywhere because they've put their bar too high. Too high. Okay. So I think it's a, it's a, it's a more philosophical one. Mm. Um, now, was Tony talking more about dentists or just young people? Well, we are talking, first of all, about generations. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just the, gen the attitude uh, between, uh, you know, the, the, the different generations. And, and that conversation came about because, you know, Tony's heavily involved with vocational training yeah. and I was a vocational trainer myself for a decade. Yeah. And, uh, you know, obviously many, many different things happened to me in terms of like more private industry selling practices. So vocational training came from being something where I'm spending a lot of time with people Maybe it's, sort of, maybe it's an element of I'm aging myself. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, I was a young VT trainer and then slowly progressed to a middle-aged VT trainer. Mm -hmm. And I just started noticing the difference in attitude yeah. from, you know, yeah. from, from, from the different generations coming out. Whereas now it's more a case of and everything that we talked about today, that I want to be a cosmetic dentist and I want a lime bleach bond and I want a private job. I don't want to do any UDAs. I don't want to, you know, um, build my skill set slowly and really understand mm. the subject. I just want instant gratification. And it's kind of just like, that's the way society has moved. So In society, instant yeah. houses, mm. you know, like huff houses and things like mm. that that come flat packed. Mm. I was uh, watching Click the other day and it was showing a 3D printed house mm. um, as opposed to putting the groundwork in, putting, you know, excavating down, putting good footings in. So our house is going to be a lot stronger. So uh, that's that's the new way. Mm -hmm. Whether it's good or bad, I don't really know. I um, have to know how long the 3D printed houses are going to last, mm -hmm. which will be some stage in the future. Um, all I know is, from my point of view, to be successful at dentistry, you need a really thorough understanding of all parts of dentistry. Yeah. Um, you need experience, and I would never say to a, a young dentist, go straight into private practice. The NHS, in my view, again, in my view, the National Health Service should say to, certainly to dentists, mm. that, okay, we've put you through dental school, you now have to do five-year contract with us for NHS work. That's how I feel that we should be doing. Um, because the NHS does need to keep on going in some form. Yeah. And if it's to go forward in the form it is currently in yeah. and not just become an emergency service, then we need dentists. Yeah. And it's either we bring dentists in from overseas, which obviously the GDC are starting to do, very slow at doing it. Yeah. Okay, uh, yeah, we'll get a committee together. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll discuss it as opposed to saying let's do it. 
Um, but that's happening. Um, and in 12 months' time, I think we'll see a lot more overseas dentists here. Yeah. A lot more doing ORE examinations, uh, et cetera. Um, but I think that uh, you need a good, good basic grounding. And I think the NHS provides that. Yeah. And with all my guys, the 350 that come through, I say, you're doing an occlusal splint now. Go, you've learned today to do a Michigan splint, fully ad adjusted Michigan splint. You've learned that technique. Now go and do three or four on the NHS. You get paid peanuts for it, but you're going to learn your trade. And when you move into private practice, I can do a splint. I can do a splint. Yeah. As opposed to being in private practice, then going, oh, I got taught by Paul to do splints 12 months ago. Now, how do I do one? And that trepidation and nerves coming out, you want to be able to do it, mm. do it, do it. And that's where we teach our dentists to go and do private work on the NHS. Mm -hmm. And it's a learning experience. Mm. And that's what they got to do. Pick some nice people and now treat you totally privately and learn how to do that so you don't make your mistakes in practice. Yeah, 100%. practice. 100%. And uh, that's, so, yeah, uh, yeah, and, you know, if that needs a change in the law, because it would need a change in the law, I think, mm. to say that, you know, we, you've, we've paid the government, you've paid a part, but the government have paid 250000 300000 to put through dental school. Mm. You've now, your contract with us is you do X number of years in the NHS. Mm. And... Uh, I suppose that's some well with the the, the 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 newly qualified guys are slowly trying to move away from this and just echoing what you've just said when i did all your courses i was a nash practitioner mostly yeah and i learned all my skills on nash patients and eventually i just went private yeah to the that's point right. where you know you the build team up built. your confidence absolutely yeah uh, and we've got to look at the other side of things is litigation yeah and you know nobody wants to get litigated against and and so much litigation out there, dental law partnership and, and all the other solicitors. Um, and, you know, I, I do work for the defense unions. Mm. And, you know, we see some horrific things coming through where dentists are really cocked up. Mm. And we see some things which are totally naive, mm. where dentists don't have an understanding. They've jumped into something without fully documenting, without fully examining. Mm. Uh, and... And it's a, just a, such a dumb, dumb thing that they've done. Yeah. And they've done that because they don't have the experience. Yeah. They've jumped into doing something privately without the experience. And if they'd have taken the time, they would now not have that litigation. That litigation will set them back in their careers. Okay, they'll have, they'll go down, they'll lose confidence, they'll lose face, etc. It will take four or five years to build themselves back up again. Yeah. And rather than going through that and all the stress, have a more steadier trajectory and learn to do things the correct way. Yeah. And that's coming on courses like ours that you've been on and doing that work on the NHS and doing bits more private on the NHS, learning your trade. And there's nothing like learning your trade. Oh, absolutely. There's no shortcuts, unfortunately, to learning the trade. And we're in the trade of dentistry, no shortcuts. Mm. And I think that's probably the most solid take home message from today. Uh, Paul, you've given us a lot of your time today, and two Pleasure. hours has Pleasure. just Pleasure. flown by. Is it two hours? Two hours. Well, that yeah, has absolutely. flown by because that felt to me like about forty-five minutes. Yeah, it did, and um, uh, I've had fun. I've had. It's been, you know, yeah, yeah, lovely talking to you. Um, I can talk about dentistry for hours and hours. Um, yeah, it's my passion. It's my life. It's the future. Um, I want to help people and. Uh, and so, yeah, I like talking about it. No, it's great. And Paul, again, once again, thank you. Well, I'm going to say a few thank yous. Thank mm. you for, first of all, you know, giving me the knowledge to progress in my career. And I'm one of thousands that you've you've uh, you've trained. So, you know, there's thousands of people like me which have benefited from 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 your guidance and your 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 um, your, your time and just just being generous with your knowledge because there's a lot of people particularly in our profession who are very closed with yeah, their knowledge yeah. and you'd be very very generous with your knowledge so thank you for that and again thank you for your time today and uh you know this podcast is going to go out now to thousands of people so i hope people take on board what you've said today and uh, i'm just going to say again tipton training in the uk at least is it's the premium 
you know, training academy. It's the go-to training academy. That's what I say to everybody. Um, I'm sure you've probably seen many of my associates and friends who have come through tips and training Absolutely. on my recommendation. Absolutely, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you know, long may that continue. And I think the other thing I've established is that I think I probably need to do a refresher because it's been a long time now and there's a few things <laughs> yeah. which, which have come in. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah so, so there's a yeah. few things which I'm, I'm not aware of. So, so you'll probably be seeing me again very soon. That's it. All right, Paul. Yeah, enjoyed it. Thank you. Cheers.